Carol Patak tells me that if you have SDHB and you're going to treat somebody, you treat them with CVD and not absolutely not with temozolomide. Now, I, I don't think that you'll find that written in the literature anywhere, but I was just wondering what the experience is with, with that and what other people, with other people's uh, feeling or experience is in terms of SDHB or any of the other specific mutations. I can just speak from um, our experience with our patients who have come to the point um, where they're SDHB and they're metastatic, um, where they're inoperable. Um, sometimes they, they just come to our center and um, they've either had uh, many surgeries in the past or there's too many, too many tumors, surgery's not an option. So the first, first line that we use is MIBG. If they're MIBG positive, we send them for MIBG treatment, number one. Depends on the rate of the progression, too, of their disease. Um, when they come and present, we, we have to look at the whole picture. If their catecholamines are high, they're symptomatic, there's too much disease, sometimes we just start CBD. Um, and with our SDHB patients, we have had excellent, um, excellent results. Usually we bring them back, we, we start them immediately, we bring them back after three cycles, and it's amazing, just a simple CAT scan, um, the, the results that we're having, their biochemistry has gone down, their tumors are shrinking. I have not had a patient that is SDHB, that's SDHB, that we've started chemotherapy on, that it has not worked. So what about other temozolomide? Is, is there, can you say that that doesn't work, or? Is, Gosh, that's a question that for thing? Dr. Fogo. That's not an option for our patients. That's, that, that's not a, the, the treatment of choice, let's just say. And, and according to Dr. Fogo, who is our oncology attendant who deals with all of our FEO patients, that, that's, that and Sutent we don't use. I, and I, I don't have an answer for you. He just says that they don't work. Anybody else? Amy? Amy? I don't. I, Go. I can't say I have enough information in order to come to a very key conclusion. But over the years, use of CBD, I've not been particularly impressed with. Temozolamide is a very easy drug to use. In terms of experience, I suppose one would have to say one should start with CBD, and if they break through, you have temozolamide as a second line. But I must say, I've started SDHB mutation patients straight on to temozolamide. And if not seen amazingly dramatic responses, certainly seen some shrinkage in tumor stabilization. But I think there is no definitive answer. We're actually thinking back in the UK of getting a proper trial where we actually compare to the two arms. It'll take quite a while. Amy? Um, yeah, I wanted to go back um, to Dr. Grossman with, with some of the drugs you know, for pre management. I've had FIOs during two of my pregnancies, and in the second one, they actually knew about it and put me on the phenoxybenzamine. And I hear from a lot of patients, you know, concern, is that okay, you know, not for so much for yourself, but for the fetus and for the, the children. Are there any long-term effects to the children after, after they're born, having been exposed to, you know, long-term? I don't think there are any data demonstrating that. That's what I was wondering, if there was any data. No, I mean, but... Uh, the the largest experience uh, uh, in for the use of alpha blockers in pregnancy is with uh, 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 and it's during I mean if a pregnant woman uh, has uh, been diagnosed with a pheochromocytoma, the drug of choice is phenoxybenzamine, and in 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 my opinion, I mean uh, from what I know there. Are no uh, reported side effect on the fetus at all. There has been a randomized controlled trial of uh, trazosine versus uh, placebo in uh, uh, pregnant patients with uh, a no chromostoma but uh, with pregnancy hypertension. And the drug uh, was shown to be safe. Since we have that evidence, even if it is limited, we prefer to use uh, trazosine in this uh, 
setting. I'm not aware of uh, any trial, any controlled randomized trial of uh, phenotypentamine during pregnancy. But the question is, I think what you're implying is, are there any long-term changes eventually to, to the child? Right. And I mean, it doesn't appear right now to my child that there's any problems, but <laughs> I didn't know if there was any data anywhere else there, that there says... Are, there aren't data. I, the short answer, again, which should be almost certainly there will be no long-term problems, but come on, guarantee it, no. I mean, we have the same problem with prolactinomas. We treat them with big doses of bromocryptine, sometimes right through pregnancy. And you think, well, this is ridiculous. You're using a dopamine agonist that floods the brain, that gets to every dopamine receptor in your brain and, and, and the child's brain. It must do something. But those kids have been very carefully followed up and absolutely no side effects have been seen. So I, I, I would be quite sanguine that it's going to be fine. That's a really common question on the patient boards, you know. Is it? it yeah, a lot of people are very concerned about that. A lot of patients. Mm. An absence of data doesn't mean an absence of effect, but I think as, as much as we know, it looks okay. Um, still on the subject of phenoxybenzaline, it's a very prevalent drug, <clears throat> as you probably all know. Um, over a period of three and a half, well, three years, I was on the drug pretty well for one entire year. Um, and I wonder if there is an agreed amount of time that is preferred for the drug to be used. And I've heard of 10 days pre-operative and then management with doxycycline or something else. Um, would you all tend to agree with that? I know there are, there are exceptional circumstances on occasion, but is that a general um, agreed uh, kind of treatment or not? Is there, is there any, other in, any other parameter that you would protocol that you would suggest? I wouldn't say 10 days. I think you need a minimum of 10 days in order to get cardiovascular regula re-regulation. But if, if my surgeon's terribly busy and says, well, actually, I can't operate for a couple of months, and I know the patient's safe, then I'll leave on, on for an been for a couple of months. But I think probably three months is, is about, about the maximum I, I'd be happy. <laughs> quality, quality, quality of life is somewhat affected. <laughs> oh, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Three months. I, mean, I have patients, <laughs> I have patients that, that's, been, that's been on it for a year. Well, from the, point, from the point of view of the patient. From, uh, it's not a nice drug to take. It, change it to doxys, doxysostin. Yeah. Uh, but if the patient is not having... If the, if the patient is absolutely fine and they say I have no side effects, uh, I'm, I'm I okay. have, my, my personal experience, I have been using phenoxybenzamine for more than a decade. And then I shifted to doxycycline. I must say that, I mean, I, 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 I've been happy with both the drugs in terms of outcome. The problem is that phenoxybenzamine is a, 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 a non-competitive uh, alpha blockers inhibitor, so which means it sticks to the receptors and it's not displayed. That, that's the why you, you, you find uh, high potential uh, uh, after surgery, because uh, uh, the phenoxybenzamine is still there. Okay? Uh, doxazosine has more or less the same, the same half-life of phenoxybenzamine, but it's a, a competitive uh, uh, um, alpha blocker, which means that can be displaced by, by endogenous catecholamines. That's the why, for example, I, when I use doxazosine, uh, I prefer to, uh, to, administer, to give the patients uh, a doxazosine not only once a day, but more in a day, because if there is a spontaneous surge of catecholamines, it can be displaced by the receptors. So if I administer more than once in a day, uh, uh, I am uh, sh sure just to cover uh, and to protect the patients from, from uh, the effect of catecholamines. But have the patients said that they were more happy or less happy? Well, the, one of the uh, 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 phenoxybenzamine has two main side effects. One is uh, an yeah. uh, and the other is it always, always causes uh, uh, tachycardia because phenoxybenzamine is a non-selective alpha blocker. So it blocks alpha one and alpha two receptors, <coughs> and blocking alpha two receptors. Uh, it enhances the uh, uh, norepinephrine, endogenous norepinephrine release, which at the level of the heart causes tachycardia. So you, 
I have always been obliged to add a beta blockers to reduce a very uh, painful tachycardia. And this, is, this does not happen with the so because it's a, a specific alpha-1 receptors causing vasodilation without causing tachycardia. And so using that doxazosine, you do not have uh, an ejaculation. And you can also don't, do not use beta blockers. So this is my experience. And, uh, and, and I, now I use doxazosine. I'm very happy with that. I mean, my patients are very happy with that. But, but not preoperative. Or yet preoperative. Preoperative. Dr. Rosas has a question. I, I always I tell patients the good thing about phenoxybenzamine is that it's it's a non-competitive blocker, and the bad thing about it is that it's a non-competitive blocker. Uh, it, during the surgery, if you have patients that have surgeons that have to have a lot of paroxysmal hypertension, uh, those are the patients that actually can get you into trouble if you're only using doxazosin, precisely because it's a it's a competitive blocker, and those are the ones that I would add something else, the metyrosine or maybe a base of phenoxybenzamine and doxazosin, just much lower doses of phenoxamine, and, and that's, that just seems to control them a little bit better, but... Uh, I'm not an anesthetist, but my colleagues anesthetists tell me that, um, I mean, if they are experienced and prepared to treat hypertensive crisis during the surgery, they can use uh, uh, intravenous phentolamine or, or rapidil or, or, or even... Oh, phentolamine? Oh, that's ancient. That's not yeah, right. but I mean... <laughs> we can talk it's, about that later. But it's, <laughs> or rapidil, or rapidil, but it's, it, I mean, it's, it's quite effective. <laughs> I mean, it's possible just to control with IV uh, uh, drugs, the uh, hypertension. Oh, no, 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 absolutely.